Hello everyone. Welcome to the 11th episode of the AWS Primer webinar series. Today's topic uh, is going to be basics of AWS networking part two. So I will now be handing over to our speaker Jyoti Mishra. Uh, Jyoti, over to you. Okay, thank you, Faz. Uh, so hi everyone. Uh, today we'll go over uh, part two of our networking uh, sessions. Uh, and this is going to be our final theory session on VPC. After today, we'll do a lab, okay? So uh, I plan to do two, three labs uh, on VPC, okay? So since we're meeting after a gap of two weeks, let's just revise what we studied in our part one of networking session, okay? And uh, before that, um, I would like to highlight that I, I get a lot of questions regarding uh, people asking me from where to study. So what I have uh, understood uh, till now that AWS document itself is self-explanatory. They have got a lot of details. So at any day, I would recommend you all to refer to the documentation. So you can take our sessions and after that, you can refer to the documentation that would be able to no, that would help you to understand things much better okay so let's see what we studied in our part one so we just talked about okay what is uh, networking and why do we need to connect uh, computers or devices to form a network so the main purpose is to share resources okay and then since we are connecting devices uh, or nodes with what we call in the networking they will be using some network devices such as hub switch bridge gateway okay and there are different types of network, you PAN, which is your personal area network, LAN, local area network. So I'm sure you would have learned all these things in your school or college days. And then we talked about protocol also, since everything, we are connecting computers together, okay? So we have to follow our common rules. So then you have got various rules like TCP, IP, UDP, et cetera. And here is some of the devices which we learned and their usage, for example, hub. Why do we use hub? So we got to know that hub is less intelligent. Why? Because whenever any information is sent from computer A to computer B, what hub does it? It uh, uh, trans broadcasts that information to all the computers, okay? So we got to know, yeah, hub is not a good choice. Then we, we came up with some intelligent devices like switches. So uh, how what makes switches uh, intelligent is they, they have the address of your host system and your destination, okay? So they know uh, information needs to be passed from which computer to which computer, okay? Then routers, uh, so this is important uh, for our VPC as well. So they, they give you, they provide a path, okay? They tell you like, okay, information needs to pa pass from a to B and what is the best path, okay? So uh, in case of AWS, you don't see physical routers, okay? What you see is a route table, okay? Which is a logical uh, router, you can say. Then gateway. So again, uh, the what is the role of the gateway? It helps your system to communicate with the internet. So in AWS, these gateways have been replaced by internet gateway services. Then we learned about network interface card. So this is something like, uh, which helps identify your computer, okay? So every every computer has this NIC card and has a unique number, okay? Ultimately, we talk using IP addresses, but those IP address in turn is mapped to your NIC, okay? Yeah, so then we studied about public and private IP addresses. So this is important to remember that a private, private IP address ranges are from these, okay? So in our sessions, since we will be creating virtual private network, so we'll be using these kind of ranges, okay? Yeah, so finally, whatever we learn on on-premises, so we know, okay, when we talk about uh, on-premises system, okay, which is like a physical component. So you have internet, you have got routers, LAN, switches, et cetera. Okay, so all this has been replaced in the form of VPC in AWS network. So you can see here, when you were physically setting up your data center, there were so many components involved. But with AWS, it's your VPC. Okay, so ultimately, all these parts 
the still routers would exist, sw still switches would exist, okay? But you don't have to take care of those things. That is taken care by Amazon. For you, the entity which you take care of is setting up your VPC, your virtual private network, etc. okay? Yeah, so again, yeah, so this is your traditional ID. Okay, so you had computers, they were connected to hub, and then you had routers. So all this has been replaced by VPC, uh, your, this section, if you call, talk about this section, this has been replaced by your subnet, okay? And then you have got router, which tells you, okay, how, how traffic needs to go from subnet A to the internet or from subnet A to subnet B, okay? And uh, then we, 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 learn about various components of VPC, which we learn in detail in today's session as well. So we understood CIDR, which is like your classless internet domain routing. For simple uh, city, just understand CIDR is a IP range, which you provide to your VPC, okay? Then we have subnet, which is like dividing your larger network into a smaller networks. So in terms of technology, you can think that, okay, uh, you have an application, that application has front end, it has got back end, okay? Uh, you want to expose front end to the uh, uh, world, okay? But you don't want to expose your back end, which is your database. So what you can do is you can create a public subnet, uh, which would have your web services, okay? And then you can have a private subnet, which can have your database services, okay? So this is what you do. You have a larger network, uh, and then you divide it into a sub-network, okay? Then internet gateway, as I told you, uh, what we have in a physical network, same we have in our AWS, where internet gateway helps your component, uh, like EC2 instances, etc., to communicate with internet, okay? Then we talked about virtual private gateway and customer gateway. So what are these components? For example, uh, you, ha you have an application which is hosted on AWS. Okay, maybe uh, let me take example of one of my organization, PayU, for example. It's a hypothetical example. So PayU has their application, okay? Flipkart has their application. Assume that Flipkart's application is all on-premises, okay? Now, if Flipkart wants to communicate with uh, PayU, okay? So how, how do we achieve those communications? So we have something uh, towards PayU is virtual private gateway and towards the customer, you'll have customer gateway. So this is how you uh, form a communication between a customer which is on-premise and a customer which is on cloud, okay? Uh, VPN, I'm sure you all would know what is VPN, okay? And then uh, direct connect. So we'll understand their difference when we should go for a direct connect, when we should go for VPN, why direct connect is uh, preferred versus your VPN. And then we we also will create this route table today, okay? So how does your route table actually looks like? So whenever you create a VPC, you'll have a default uh, route table. So uh, this is what destination means. If your any component in your VPC, okay, they wants to communicate with another component in say VPC, okay? So that target is local, means you don't need any internet for the communication. Okay. But for example, any uh, suppose your EC2 instance wants to communicate with anything other than this range. Okay, What is this range? It was for your VPC. Okay? So if you want to connect to anything other than here, so that needs to be, go, that needs to go through your internet gateway. Okay, so we'll create internet gateway as well. Yeah, so this is all what we studied in our part one, which was our introductory session. Okay, let's, let's move to part two, which would be a little detailed session, but yes, again, it's going to be a theory. And if time permits, I'll, I'll give you a demo of creating a VPC, okay? Any questions till now before we proceed to today's session? No, no question. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Okay, guys. So recap we have done. Okay, so we did a recap. Now, uh, what we'll do today is we'll understand what is VPC pairing, what exactly we mean by VPC endpoint, VPN, 
plus we'll study about some firewall okay so i know uh, in physical network okay so they we had a firewall right not anybody and anyone can access our system so we had kept some firewall in place right so similarly in aws also we have a firewall concept okay which we achieve it through two services which is like your security group and then another one is nacl okay and finally we'll do a hands on uh, lab so in today's hands on lab i'll tell you how to create a vpc okay and in upcoming labs we'll have a detailed session on vpc pairing vpc endpoint okay yeah so when we say virtual private cloud okay what exactly we mean by virtual private cloud okay so it's your everything under that uh, vpc it's your it's under your control okay and you the cid re range which you choose is what i showed you in your previous slide right so the, the private ranges so for private cloud we have a private ip addresses which you need to have okay and you have a control over what subnet can and ca can't talk to okay so everything is under your control okay it's same as having your uh, data set okay now whenever we create a account in aws by default in a region uh, again I'll, I'll show it to you by logging into aws that you get something which is called as default vpc okay so what is so special about default vpc first it's CIDR range is this, okay? But anything which is created under default VPC, it has a public access, okay? So anything which you have created in VP, default VPC, they can communicate to internet, okay? But when you create uh, anything using uh, your private cloud, okay? I mean, when you customize your VPC, you create your own VPC, that time you cannot access anything on the internet directly. You need to set up your internet gateway, route, uh, route tables, etc. Okay. Now, how does your public and private subnet looks like? Okay. So, if I create anything, so you have a region. Okay. This is your AWS region. Under region, what do we create? VPC, which is virtual private cloud. Why is it private? Because I have picked IP ranges which which comes under private section that's a second is you cannot now anything which i create under this vpc they cannot communicate with internet directly without doing certain changes okay now under vpc you have your availability zone we know why we have come up with why amazon has come up with availability zone they want to make sure that your system is fault tolerant as in something happens in your say availability zone one then you still have availability zone two or three to take care of the fault. Okay. Now in under availability zone, you can go ahead and create your private subnet and public subnet. So indirectly, what is the distinguishing factor between private subnet and public subnet? As the name applies, if anything is public, that means it, any component under that public subnet can communicate with outside world. Okay. But under private subnet, you cannot talk to uh, components uh, on the internet okay but the question comes i as i told you what do we keep in public subnet your web services right and what do we keep what is recommended uh, to be kept in private subnet something which you don't want to expose it to the client right for, for example your databases your configuration files okay but we we have to update our database right we, we keep getting different versions of databases now to update or patch you need to con connect to the internet right so we'll study how a uh, how component under private subnet can communicate to internet okay so let's study about okay i have created my vpc okay uh, which is private which i know okay now i can add external additional firewalls okay in additional security checks so how is it achieved in aws using two components one is network access control list which we call as uh, NACL, okay, and second is security group, okay. So, what is network access control list? This is a rule which you apply at the secure at the subnet level, okay. Again, we'll study and when we'll see uh, in a demo, you'll be able to form more connections, okay. For now, just understand from the diagram itself that okay, I had my region, 
we went ahead and we created vpc under vpc we created two subnets okay so this is my subnet 1 this is my subnet 2 okay now if i i want uh, to allow certain things like i want certain ip addresses only to connect to my instances or to my subnet okay uh, and then i don't want uh, i want to deny certain things okay so how do we do that we do it using network acl so we set up some rules so we have rule 50 so it is recommended that whenever you create network acl rule you create it in multiples of uh, 100 reason being maybe today you don't know how many rules you might uh, require okay so when we are starting we know okay we'll need just two rules okay so i'll create rule 50 and rule 100 okay and remember always the rule with the smallest number get preference so if you have got two rules rule 40 sorry rule 50 and rule 100 and rule 50 says that i allow ssh connection to to my system okay but then there is rule 100 which says i don't allow ssh connection then rule 50 would take preference okay so the one with the smaller um, value has highest priority okay so with network acl what i am doing i am setting up those rules okay what can be allowed in my system and what can be denied okay then comes another firewall uh, component in aws which is security group now that is at the instance level at the instance level you apply the rules okay now let's just understand what is the difference common thing about both these component is they are giving you the firewall okay uh, but what is the distinguishing fa factor between security group and nacl so as i told you the security group they are at your instance level okay but nacl they are at your oh there is a spelling spelling mistake apologies so uh, the nacl are at your subnet level okay they tell you what is allowed in a subnet and what is not allowed in a subnet okay so uh, your security group has just allowed okay so you say when we create a security group we just uh, say okay ssh okay and we specify the port okay so any request on this port which is like 443 or 80 so that is allowed okay and you don't have to explicitly uh, specify the deny rule as well okay so that makes your security group stateful okay but in case of nacl you need to allow and deny both which makes it stateless so here is this um, diagram which is depicting uh, how nacl so how your route table would look like with respect to nacl so suppose you get a request from this ip address okay uh, to your destination ip okay which is for example say your uh, rvpc component okay some device in rvpc and i have specified the source port so the source port is for this ip and this is for my destination ip now i need to add a another rule okay so i have to specify complete thing whatever is allowed from here to here now i'm i have to explicitly specify that okay i can send traffic from this to this as well but in case of your security group just one line would be enough okay yeah so this is what i have uh, i took this picture uh, from internet so now you can see okay so this was your vpc you had your private subnet okay you had it, okay these are your private subnet now let's understand what is nat and your internet gateway okay uh, let's quickly revise because i can understand it's, it's little tricky so vpc your virtual private cloud which is you get a feeling that everything in this it's your cloud you can do anything here okay and then you, there there are certain ranges which you need to take while creating a vpc uh, and we call it as cidr ranges uh, we studied in our pre uh, previous session like what is your cidr so we have got two forms of ip uh, which is ipv4 and you have ipv6 okay so in ipv4 uh, you have got uh, what do you say 32 bits okay and now with cidr range notation see this is your cidr range notation it uh, slash 16 means that out of this 32 bits how is this 32 bit it is like this is 8 bit 8 bit 8 8 so you're saying out of this 32 bit 16 is for met my network id so what exactly we mean, we mean by network id is how do i identify that this is the network which is created by fast and this is the network which is created by say jyoti okay so every network has its network id and then you have got a host id 
So what exactly we mean by host ID is number of devices which you can have in the uh, uh, in your VPC. Okay, so then you have got two to power sixteen host IDs, which is like sixty five thousand something. Okay, and uh, remember that uh, not all sixty five thousand uh, you can uh, use for your uh, devices. Uh, there are five which are reserved for certain purposes. Like you would have studied about loopback, IP, etc. So those are reversed. So, so for example, you've got two fifty six uh, uh, host IPs. So out of two fifty six, you can utilize only two fifty one. Okay. Then we study the layering. Like you've got AWS region. Then we'll go ahead and create VPC. If you don't create a VPC by default, there is a default VPC. And what is so special about that default VPC? Uh, there you. Any component which are created under default VPC, they can directly communicate with the internet. Okay, then we come to a availability zone, and under availability zone, we create public and private subnet. Okay, then we talked about a firewall. So we have got two kinds of firewall. One firewall which works at the subnet level. What uh, in case of NACL, we have to specify both allow and deny policy. And in case of security group, which applies at the instance level, you don't have to explicitly specify allow and deny. Okay. okay. Now let's study about this component, which is Internet Gateway. So from diagram itself, you can understand that Internet Gateway is at the VPC level, and this is helping all the devices under here or your components under here. They are helping Internet Gateway is helping them to communicate with the outside world, which is your internet. Okay. So what is Internet Gateway? It's a virtual router that connects VPC to internet. Default VPC is attached to Internet Gateway. Now you understand why anything which is there in default VPC is able to communicate with internet because the default VPC is attached to the Internet Gateway. Default Internet Gateway. Okay. But when we create a new VPC, then we have to attach it to the Internet Gateway. Okay. Yeah. So Internet Gateway allows resources within your public subnet to access the internet. Okay. Anything in the private cannot be accessed. Okay. Directly. There is another way which we'll study, and that way is your NAT Gateway. Okay. So let me show you. Okay. So this is private sub subnet. Here we had created a EC2 instance. Do you see this dash dash? So you see from EC2 instance, the EC2 instance which is there in private subnet is able to co communicate with the internet. So how is that possible? It's possible through this NAT gateway. Okay, and we create NAT gateway in public subnet. Okay, uh, we'll do a demo of this as well, and it's a little tricky because you have studied about private subnet. Uh, uh, private IP address, public subnet, public IP address. There's another concept which is elastic IP address. So, what is elastic IP address? Uh, whenever you create an EC2 instance in your account, you'll see if you terminate it, okay, or you restart it, a new IP address gets assigned, okay, both private and public, okay. But if your IP address which you associate with your device is elastic, that means the IP address remains same. Okay, and you are charged for that. Okay. So what you do is now what we do is like if any component under private subnet wants to communicate with the internet in the route table, okay, we enter that okay. If my private component in my uh, private subnet wants to uh, connect to internet, which is like 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 IP address, the target would be your NAT gateways ID. Okay, so see. This is one route table which we had created somewhere. Oh, that was in previous section. Okay, I'll, I'll show you that. Okay. So whatever I told you, uh, and we understood why things in private subnet so uh, need to communicate with the internet. Okay. Like people might ask, if you ultimately you wanted your your instances to communicate with the internet, so why did you add it to private subnet? You should have added to public subnet. But we know. What is importance of private subnet? It is, it is that network where you are keeping your um, components, uh, which has got very critical data. For example, your database, and you cannot expose your database directly to the customers. Okay. And uh, full form of NAT is network address translation. Okay. 
now vpc pairing okay so for example i have created my vpc say it's vpc a in say region mumbai and there is another vpc in say region uh, some say virginia okay and i want them to communicate without using internet okay i want that anything under vpc a is able to communicate with anything under vpc b without using internet so for that what we do we do a vpc pairing connection okay and uh, why do we need to uh, this could be like within your account and it could be cross account uh, as well okay so across a different account also you can do a vpc pairing so for testing purpose uh, suppose you are maintaining two uh, types of application okay one which is targeted for us and another one which is targeted for europe okay but the database is there in the us okay because when we created this application we had only us client so now you won't go ahead and create a new database in your vpc b okay so you want that that they should be able to communicate okay i want that whatever has been created here i can reuse while working with vpc b okay so what you do you do a vpc pairing this is also very important transitive pairing is not possible what does that mean for example each of one of us creates our vpc okay uh, parmesh creates his vpc and uh, he associates a vpc pairing with raj kishor okay and raj has created a vpc pairing with say faz so that does that mean parmesh uh, parmesh and faz uh, vpc they can communicate with each other no because vpc pairing is not transitive i have to explicitly create a pairing between parmesh vpc and faz vpc Okay, guys. I'll 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 pause for a minute. Any questions? Anything uh, you would like me to repeat? Hello. Yeah, Raj. Yeah, Jyoti, could you please uh, come again with this uh, VPC pairing because uh, I'm not able to understand clearly. So I would okay. request you to kindly help me out with this again, if possible. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Thank uh, you. Again. raj um, i would say that this is a theory session okay just understand the words and when we'll do a demo you'll understand in more detail but yes i'll repeat it for you so what is vpc pairing is when you want to connect two vpcs okay so that for that you use vpc pairing so what is so special about the pairing you can see there is no internet gateway okay so now your vpc a if anything any instance in vpc a wants to communicate with instance in vpc b and here understand these two vpc are in different regions they are not in same regions okay when we are talking about vpc pairing we are talking about different regions okay so if i want to communicate from a to b okay there is one way which was internet okay but there is another way which is your vpc pairing wherein you have this private connection so you are not going over to the internet okay so that is the advantage of vpc pairing you are connecting to vpcs which are in different region or in a different account and then we talked about transitive pairing which was like for example there was another vpc which was vpc c so you had connected your a with b and b with c so that doesn't mean that a and c would get connected okay so we don't have transitive pairing okay. does that make sense raj Thank you so much. Yeah. So you know that um, there are certain services which are not associated with region. Okay. They are example your S three bucket. Okay. Lambda services. So they are not associated with the internet. Okay. Now, if your instances. okay in your vpc if they want to communicate with s3 bucket which is not associated to a region okay so how do we attain that communication we do it using vpc endpoint uh sorry uh, sorry jyoti i have one question basic question uh, mm -hmm. so these two vpc are different ip range i mean cda range is different so yes. how the connection is established between these two uh for now understand that that's a good question by the way and that is important part let me go here you have to ensure that vpc 
uh, IP addresses are different, right? Because uh, exactly. when you go ahead and do pairing, there would be a conflict, right? So yes. everything which you are doing, like pairing, there would be a table which you have to maintain. In table, you have to do the entry that if, okay, if there is any request, from this, okay, what would be my target? The target would be this uh, CIDR range, okay? So this is mm -hmm. how communication is being established between BPC A and BPC B, okay? In layman's okay. language, just understand this, uh, it's acting like a router. It's not a router, but just it's acting like a router. You'll have a table okay. and wherein you'll specify, okay, uh, something from A can communicate. We need to put Okay. Can you show me? Uh, I mean, practically, so little doubt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll we'll do that in our upcoming session. So this okay, is, okay. How we do these sessions is like we always have a theory, and then okay. we do what. Okay. Thank you. Uh, now VPC endpoint. Okay. Again, for understanding, it's a very small thing. But when we'll implement, we'll have all those details. Okay. So. See these tables, these tables are very important. Route table, which I was telling you in, in the recap also. Everything, every rule which you said, you have to set it in a route table. Okay. So what is VPC endpoint? So again, we'll create a VPC endpoint, we'll create some service. And what will I do is we'll create a table, something like that. This. Okay. So here it says that if if anything in S3 uh, wants to communicate with your uh, Okay, sorry, your instances, if your instances wants to communicate with S3, which is my target, okay? So any instance in my VPC, if they want to communicate with S3, which is my destination, how are they going to communicate? They are going to communicate using VPC endpoint, okay? okay? So you understand the difference? VPC endpoint helps you to connect your instances in VPC with services like S3, which are not bound uh, to a region. Okay, they are not bound to a subnet and they are not bound to VPC. Okay, see, if you want to communicate, if your instances want to communicate to the internet, then what do we have? We have internet gateway. If your instances want to communicate with S3 bucket, you have got VPC endpoint. If your one VPC wants to communicate with another VPC, then we have to do VPC pairing. Okay, all this we'll do it through our tables. So we'll create VPC endpoint and then in, we'll go ahead and route table and we do the entry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, remember our recent uh, uh, Facebook issue which we got, right? Wherein uh, Facebook, Instagram, etc., they were down, right? So that is also related to. So you've got two kind of network. One is your Amazon's global network. Okay. So they they don't go over internet and for the communication that is done internally okay and there is another kind of internet when which you do it using internet okay like internet gateway etc so that instance uh, incidents uh, which happened it was because of the global network their network itself there was issue there uh, communication i mean that path could not be uh, what how how do you, how do i say okay so that path couldn't be connected and what when we say path, it's like we, we do entry in the route table. Okay, so you have to do all the entries in the route table for any communication. So this is very important. The route tables are very important. See, these devices, what are these devices? They don't have intelligence in themselves, right? They are just devices. Okay. We we set up those rules and we tell okay, device A, if device A wants to communicate with device B, okay. First of first and foremost, is that communication allowed? If yes, okay, and then what is the path a person has to follow? For example, if something in your network wants to communicate with the internet, so do we have the path? Yes, we have the path. This is the path which we have given, okay? If your instance wants to communicate with S3, okay, how can we do it? First of all, can we do it? If there won't be any entry here, that means there is no such communication or there is no such path. Okay. But if you do an entry, that means yes, yes, there is a path. Okay. And what is the target? So what would happen? Your these instances, okay, they'll they'll send their request to VPC endpoint. Now it's VPC's implementation which would take care of the further communication. Okay. So again, uh, creation of private connection between VPC to supported AWS services is your VPC endpoint, and that we do it through a private link. So what exactly we mean by private link? There is no internet. 
in between okay so this is my private network which we are using okay and then vpc endpoint supports ipv4 traffic okay so what exactly we mean by ipv4 traffic which is like it's for private okay anything in ipv4 is private but anything in ipv6 has a uh, public access endpoints are supported within same regions only you cannot create an endpoint between vpc and services in a different region okay now uh, vpn uh, yeah so simple suppose you want to communicate with you want to access your aws services okay so how can you do it by creating a vpn okay so these are the things which is important okay the example which i gave you private uh, sorry flipkart and payu okay so if i want to uh, connect flipkart with payu so i have to use vpn okay so this is what they are saying that you should know the ip ranges of the vpc okay uh, and then again just here you'll have something called as virtual private gateway and you attach it to the vpc okay so anything on the payu side what we'll create will be create virtual private gateway and we'll at att attach it to the vpc again at the customer side we have a customer gateway okay yeah so this is the diagram which you can understand this is your application this is your cloud okay here is virtual private gateway so understand from the diagram when we were connect, connecting to the internet we had internet gateway now we are not connecting to internet what we are doing we are pairing your this system with this on premises with your cloud okay so you have virtual gateway here and at the customer end you have customer gate okay and between them you are doing a vpn connection so vpn connection you can understand it's kind of a uh, private connection which is happening and nothing is going across internet okay so again all this thing this is how physically it looks okay but ultimately logically what we are doing you create all these entries in the route table yeah. so this was like you had a there's another way to connect two components so that we call it as a direct connect Okay. so when we want uh, less latency etc so you can have a dedicated network connection between your aws and your customer data so then you don't have a vpn okay so ultimately the entries would change here you'll create a, a virtual gateway and you'll do an entry in the route table similarly in case of aws direct also there would be a route table okay and where is that route table we create at the vpc layer level okay so all those things uh, all those paths we are showing showcasing at the vpc level okay so we'll create something which is called as aws direct connect and we'll give a path okay so this would have a ip and this would have a ip and we'll do an entry here okay so if my system wants to access anything of this ip range this ip range is my customer's ip range then it has to be through direct connect So this was all about the theory. Okay, now we'll start doing labs. Okay, so for today's lab, I have let me see if there is time. Yeah, we have a time. So, um, Premesh, you have sorry, Parmesh and Raj, you must be thinking like what are these things, right? Now you'll be able to follow when we do a practical. Okay, so let's do today's practical, which is like creating virtual private cloud. So I'm going to create my own network. Okay, and then I'll create subnet, route table, and internet gateway. Okay, so let's log into AWS. First, let me show you those default VPC and all those things. Okay. So I have logged in. Let me take Tokyo. I was doing some. Maybe let's take say Hong Kong. Okay. <coughs> maybe there would be some issue. I'll take this. Okay. So I'm in California. 
if i go to vpc see where does vpc services comes into picture if i go under networking so uh, as i've told you from our first session itself when we talk about aws now we start talking in terms of services okay and all these services are divided into various component okay so the one service which we are studying currently it's vpc it comes under network and connect delivery okay i have a vpc yeah see you see something here so this is your default vpc okay then you've got subnet so uh, this is for just two availability zone uh then route table let's see how does a route table looks like okay so we don't have to worry about the internal working we should just for now we should know okay uh if i want to establish a connection of anything in my network to internet so what is that service which i have to use okay so let's see this route table see i didn't create this route table it's by default okay and you will see here this route table has a entry of your vpc so this is associated with your default vpc okay <clears throat> let's see what all routes are given here oh uh, maybe i have used it but do you see this this is the default route table okay you see two entries first is this what do we mean by this this means now any devices in this network if they want to communicate with any other devices in the this network they can do it directly you don't have to go over the internet so that's why you have a local here okay i didn't create this this is my default route table when i went to north california then you see another entry which is this 0.0.0.0 so this means now your devices can communicate with anything so anything is say your internet okay so how can they do it they do it through internet gate yeah so this is what we studied in our, in our theory session that anything in default vpc they can communicate with the internet why they can communicate with the internet because they are associated with internet gateway and where do you see that association okay see you've got these ind individual component vpc subnet route table internet gateway so all the asso association i have stored in this route table okay let's let's pick any other um, region say paris let's see yeah so in paris also see you see two entries okay one is for internet and one is for devices within this vpc okay now we'll go ahead and create our vpc now okay so let's pick a region i want to pick a region which i have not used cape town oh i think you cannot access such regions mm -hmm. city let me take city Uh, why few regions are not accessible? Uh, is it uh, any service limitation uh, now, or maybe some technical issue, or uh, all no, the regions so. will not provide all the services? Yeah, yeah. Mine is a free. I didn't read what they were saying, but I'm just guessing. Maybe uh, mine is a free trial account. So maybe uh, if I enable no, it. No, Jyoti. Actually, actually, uh, there are certain uh, limitation limitation in the sense it has been owned by the government. So there is oh. no public access for that particular cloud in that particular location. Oh, okay. Like China, even you do have uh, some in uh, USA and uh -huh. Hong Kong. These are the regions which are. In, Oh. particularly used by the government it is not by okay, okay. we don't have access for that particular location okay okay, okay. Thank, you. thank you thank you kishore yes. oh i assume that maybe it's because of a free trial okay yeah let's go ahead and create our own vpc so let me create my uh, vpc one okay here you have to give your ipv4 cider block okay 
So for simplicity, let's have this only. 16, okay. Uh, no IPV, okay, I'm, I'm keeping it as default, okay. Because if I pick anything dedicated for that, I'll be charged, okay. Jyoti, excuse me, sorry to interrupt you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah. IP, IP before, uh, IP address which you have provided in 10 10.0.0, uh, uh -huh. 10 which is like mm -hmm. uh, you're providing by default or like we do have that range with us, how it is? Yeah, so um, I'm providing it by default. And why I picked that? Because I know for private. So I'm creating my private network, right? So we have got a range for private network, right? So that, that is one of the range. So this 10.0.0.0 slash 16, I can have 24 also. So the moment I start reducing this, the number of uh, mm -hmm. component or system I can have in my network, that gets reduced. Okay, so for example, if suppose you have created this uh, IPv4 CID as 10.0.0.0 oblique 10 or 15. Mm -hmm. Suppose uh, even if someone else is creating the same uh, IP address, mm -hmm. so is there any collision or like uh, that IP address will not get registered if we have already uh, created this range within our VPC? No, there won't be a conflict. That's why it is said as virtual private uh, cloud. You get the feeling that this is you who is doing everything. And nobody has uh, excess of these IP addresses. But even FAS can go ahead and use the CIDR range. Yeah. Okay. Oh, your voice is breaking. Are you asking anything else? Thank you. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay. okay. Okay, so we have created uh, our VPC, uh, and then uh, what this annotate. This is the only thing which we pick, which is like which is telling us that two bits I am keeping for my network. Uh, I mean, sixteen, and other sixteen is for my host IDs, which means I can have two to the power of sixteen uh, components in my VPC. Okay, which is something around sixty five thousand five hundred thirty six. Okay. Now I'll go ahead, what was the next thing? We have to create a subnet, okay? So for now I'll create a public subnet only. Okay. So I'm attaching it to my VPC one, okay? Availability zone, okay. For example, I'm creating this subnet and say this availability zone, okay. Now CIDR block. So for example, let's uh, think that uh, since I'm creating two, two sub network, one would have my web servers and another would have my database servers. And in data in that component, there are so specific devices which I know, okay. I, I'll be attaching 10 devices or I'll be attaching 256 devices, okay? So based on that, you pick your CIDR block, okay? So there's this uh, site, uh, which I would have mentioned somewhere in my notes, I'll tell you. So if you're not sure, you can use this. I kept it somewhere. Okay. There was this, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. See if you go here. Uh -huh. See, IPv4 subnet creator. So you tell like, okay, number of hosts you want, okay? For example, you want 256 hosts, okay? So you add the address here, okay? And then it would give you all those subnet values, right? For example, let's take this only. Um, zero and subnet mask, okay? So just remember when we say slash 16 slash 24. So 
this means that okay this is 255 to 50 that means we are uh, 24 bits we are saving see slash 24 okay we are saving for the network id and remaining ones are for my host id okay for example let's let's take this only now number of host i want to have say two for example okay so let's see what kind of a subnet i get yeah see these are the subnet ranges you get slash 31 so if okay So number of host in each subnet is two. This is one you can control your number of subnets also. So with this combination, how many subnets you are getting? One twenty eight subnets. So you can create one twenty eight subnet with two hosts. Okay, and what would be their IP? It would look something like this. Okay, maybe I want to have say fifty hosts. Okay, yeah. So this is the See idea notation you get. So let me share it with you all in the chat. Yes. Uh, yeah. So did we create our subnet? Yeah. So 10.0.0.0 slash 24. Okay. That means 2 to the power of 8 host I can have in my system. Uh, anything else, else I need to do? I have a, so, okay, yeah, this is done. Okay, so VPC is done. Your subnet is done, okay. This part of the diagram is done, okay. Your VPC is done, subnet is done, okay. Now let's create this internet gateway, okay. Okay. See, for us, uh, Raj and Parmesh, you had questions, right? See, we are not bothered about internal working of internet gateway. Okay, so I have created. If I have created internet gateway, that means it's it's a virtual router which I am creating. This would help my VPC to connect to the internet. The internal working or internal uh, setup, all these things, I don't have to create. I'm just creating all the logical entities for myself. Okay. Now, let me associate this. See, this is in detached mode. That means right now it's not uh, uh, associated with my VPC. Okay, So let me go ahead and attach to VPC. This was my VPC and attach it to the internet. Okay, so what all we have created now? We have created VPC. We Pick the CIDR block which had 16 bit for host and 16 for network ID. Okay, then I have created network internet gateway. I have attached this internet gateway with VPC. So this connection is established. Now internet gateway can communicate, uh, sorry, the VPC can communicate with internet gateway which in turn will help you in communication over the internet. Okay, I have created subnet. Okay, now all these things, uh, subnet is not associated with internet gateway yet. Okay, so how do we achieve this communication using a route table? So what is the next component I need to create? It's your route table, okay? My route table, I'm associating with PPC. Mm -hmm. By default, see, this we didn't do any entry, right? So what does this mean? That if you get IP of this range, okay? And we've just seen, what do we exactly mean by IP of this range? For example, something like this. If you get something like this, okay? 10.0.0.64 or 65, something like this, okay? That means if, if a device would have any, your host would have IP address like these, they can communicate with any other host with similar IP address in the network. They, we don't have to go it over internet, okay? 
now let me just associate subnet which i had created yeah so this is the subnet i have created save association okay and let's go to route table now what is left i need to provide a path for anything under this vpc or say subnet if they want to communicate with the internet so i'll go ahead and do edit rules add a route okay now i'll save this and what would but what is that device which helps us to communicate with the internet it's internet gateway so i'll pick this internet gateway So now what we have done, we have is we have created our virtual private network. We've created VPC. Okay, we've created Internet Gateway. We have created a subnet. Okay, and then all these entries I have done it in a route table. Okay, now we'll go ahead and create an instance in this VPC. Okay. Let me launch an instance. Uh, Jyoti is going to interrupt you. Hmm. Basically, uh, for this EC2 instance, we do require to create two instances, right? No, I'll be creating one. One should be one enough. For, for today, we are just doing one, right? We are making it simple. We have just created one subnet, and in that subnet, we are creating just one EC2 instance, OK? Okay, okay, okay. Well, I thought as for the diagram, you are going to create uh, two subnet and two EC2 instance to no. get the connectivity between them. Today is our okay. simple session. Yeah. Uh, sure, since sure. mine is a Thank Windows you. network, I'll have a Windows server. Select. Mm -hmm. See, by default, whenever you create an instance, it gets associated with the default VPC. But no, we are not connecting it with default VPC. We'll connect it with our VPC. We'll create, we'll select our subnet and auto assign public IP. Okay, just read about this. Why we need to do a auto assign as enabled? Okay, because these instances they want to communicate with the internet. So how they do it? They do it through public IP address. Okay. Uh, I think. Storage, we'll leave it as it is. Tag, we'll leave it as it is. Here is the security group, right? So I was talking about two kinds of firewall. So one, you just saw it, which is your security group. Okay, for now, I'm leaving what it, whatever it is. So what I'm saying that RDP, if you want to do it, RDP, what is the port? Okay, and this is like I'm allowing an RDP on this 33894. Okay, for now, I'm not adding any security group. Let's go ahead. Let me do it anywhere. And you didn't allow, yeah. yeah sorry to interrupt. Raj Kisora has raised his hand. Yeah. Achha, Raj, let me complete this because uh, the system takes some time to come up. So that time I'll take your question. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, let me create a new key pair. Okay. Right. Yeah, now Raj, you can say because this will take some time now. Okay, so my first question is like uh, when you were creating this EC2 instance, so at the time I saw that IAM rule was been mentioned. So is it possible that uh, we have to provide the IAM role access as well? Or uh, without IAM role, we can uh, do this, uh, whatever we are doing as of now? Okay, so Raj, we have covered all these things in our previous session itself. Okay, for now, I am okay. I'm not, yeah, yeah, so I'm not giving any specific rule right so i've kept everything as default but there are times we have to associate some uh, im rules okay so then we go ahead okay. and create the im rule and then we associate some policies etc and then we associate those with our ec2 instance 
for now no i am rule is required okay i'm not doing anything fancy here i'm just creating a small vpc okay and uh, like suppose uh, whenever we are creating this is it is only to Faz, can you hear him fine? Because for me, no, no, Raj, Raj, otherwise for me as well. Raj, maybe can you text your question? That will be better. Actually, your voice is cracking, so we are not clear. Sure, sure, sure. Just text in the chat, so it will be better. Yeah. Okay. I hope you understand. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, extremely well, extremely well. Even I'm like, uh, your network is not so proper. So just because of that, uh, this issue is occurring. Okay. But yeah, today's session is really interactive. Uh, thank you guys. Even I am learning a lot of things today. I'm just waiting for the status check to come two by two. Chat. Okay, Raj. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's connect RDB. Let me download this. I hope I hope you guys know like how to connect to the AWS instances. I know that. Uh, okay. Raj and Parmeshwar answer that. Raj, you can type your question. Uh, no worries. Actually, Puti Puti Jain, uh, I know. Uh, RDP, mm. RDP, I I didn't try actually. Oh okay okay. Yeah, so that's like put is also one way. Uh, you can do it the, by this way as well. Like if if I see you in upcoming sessions as well, I'll I'll probably take this up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. See, so I've copied password. Now let me just save this password somewhere. Yeah, Raj, I'll I'll come to your questions. Just let me start this. Uh, so, uh, in the meantime, permission uh, from what my understanding is that uh, for Linux, we are using Putty. Let's say from Windows, I want to connect to Linux, right? That's why we are using Putty. From Linux to Linux, you don't need to use Putty, right? Similar yeah. way, this RDP is used when you want to connect to a remote uh, Windows machine, as per my understanding. But by default, RDP will be enabled, right? Uh... I mean, uh, whenever we create instance, uh, no need to explicitly uh, RDP, we need to run, I guess. I, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, that Jyoti can answer. I was just trying to tell the difference between this putty and RDP, as per my understanding. Okay, uh, Jyoti, actually, uh, when we create a Windows instance, uh, we can correct, connect directly, right? Uh, uh, RDP is compulsory to, uh, I mean, uh, enable. Mm. Or, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so, no, actually, uh, even I tried. Actually, I didn't use the RDP, but it's by default it is connected my, uh, I mean, uh, Windows instance. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, honestly, I'll say even I don't know answer to this question. I'll tell you why. This is first time I'm using Windows laptop. Uh, just before the session, I was telling Faz that uh, I've changed my organization and they have given me Windows uh, laptop. So the easiest way to connect uh, what I found in on the internet okay to connect to aws was this method so i picked this method only okay maybe what you are saying is right but for that i might have to do some setup and uh, it's been just three four days for me using this machine so i haven't okay. tried it. yeah mm -hmm. but okay. prior to this we were using mac and there i just used to do ssh okay okay, okay. uh uh, Faz, would you like to take up Raj's question on the previous recording? Meanwhile, I'll see. Yeah. If... Yes, yes, I am answering that only. 
Yeah, so Raj, uh, uh, can you hear me properly? Uh, you can just type in text. Let, let me reply on text only. So that if you... I can hear you. Okay. So Raj, uh, all these recordings of the, all the previous 10 sessions are available on the TechShare YouTube channel, okay? So I will type it also so that you can uh, find that. <laughs> Raj, your voice is breaking. Okay, guys. So see, uh, let's see now if this instance of mine can connect to internet. But let's let's study all these things. What we are getting. This is my EC2 instance, right? Which I've created. Okay. You see a private IP address. It's 10.0.0.182. .0 now you understand how come we've got this IP address. Okay. So we had picked uh, CIDR range as 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 slash 16 or slash 24. So with using that combination, you got this IP address. Now you've got a public IP address. How did we get the public IP address? It's when we said, okay, auto assign, assign a public IP. Okay. So now I've opened my system. This is in my VPC. Okay. It is associated with internet gateway. Let me, let's check whether now anything here in this host is able to connect to internet or not. Okay. So for that, you can ping on 8.8.8.8. Yeah. So we are able to connect. Okay. If I go ahead and remove that internet gateway uh, row from the route table, that me that time when I do ping on the internet, I won't be able to connect. Okay. So I had only this for today's session. It was, as I said, a very basic. Now I would recommend that before we go to our next session, which would be a little complex, we'll do NAT gateway, we'll do VPC pairing, etc. So you you come prepared, you study about these things and how, where you have to study and what you need to follow. I would say AWS documentation. Let me just show you, okay, their documentation. They have answered, in fact, basic, basic questions as well. So whatever material I prepare, right, I try to follow them. So see IP addresses also, IP addressing in your VPC. They've told you everything, okay, what is IPv4, okay? And then what is IPv4.6, all those things, yeah? The format, the CIDR notation, everything they have told, okay? And then if you want to study about VPC concepts, what are various components, you'll see they've uh, given you the component also. Uh, virtual private cloud, subnet, route table, everything is there in the documentation. Don't refer any other course. Just read their documentation. You'll get a lot of information from their documentation. In fact, the labs which we are going to do, I'll do the labs which they have given. So it is like a step-by-step -step guide. The route table also, if you want to deep dive, example of routing option, work with route tables, everything is there. So what I covered was very basic to get you started. Now we'll go deep. Okay. See, you saw, right? I was doing association. So you can see everything, okay? Why we need to explicitly associate edge locations. We haven't come to it. Custom route table. So you've got one main route table. Then you can create your own route table as well. So that we called it as a custom route table, okay? Yeah, so just, just VPC pairing, somebody had a question on VPC pairing. So you have everything here. We don't need to, I would say, uh, for now, we don't need to go into the internal working, okay? Even I don't go that much internally because I'm also learning about their services, about their networking. So I'm focusing on that part. Once we are clear about their services, and then we can go inside and say, oh, how does VPC pairing work? Okay, how does Internet Gateway does? For now, I would say, um, knowing what services does and what are the prerequisites, what is the logic behind them should suffice. Okay. So I'll stop sharing. Any question, guys? Uh, one general question. Um, can you tell me exactly the difference between uh, solution architect, professional and associate? Uh, so I'm planning for uh, 
uh, solution architect position i mean um, exam uh, just can you tell me like uh, exam wise pattern wise i mean syllabus wise uh, what exactly the difference do you have any idea i have basic idea parmesh uh, since it's about your career i won't like to say that i know everything about this position but basic i know so solution architects are the ones who create this uh, architectures right they are the one who will decide okay, okay uh, uh, how many ec2 instances are there how auto uh, scaling should be done what is load balance so you'll be for you'll have a, your application now if you are planning to migrate it to the aws right so as a solution architect you have to come up with design the cost effective design a design which won't have security flaws so that's what a uh, solution architect are supposed as the name says it's architect right so you have to design it okay uh, okay and the course which i am covering it covers both it covers solution architect associate level and it consists of sysops so i i am preparing for a sysops which is more of a devops like you've created a architecture now yes. my role as a sysop is to ensure yes everything up and running and it's more about automating stuff how can i use cloud formation etc to automate everything so you've created architect once and i'll in architect also you have to come up with like okay for this particular service should i go with aws lambda or, or should we deploy it on, on ec2 instance so this is the difference i understand between a uh, solution architect and a sysops okay uh, do you have any sample maybe papers for practice uh, so it will be very helpful <laughs> like uh, for solution architect Oh, Parmesh, apologies. I don't have uh, any any papers with me. I'm sorry, I don't have. Okay, okay, okay. No, uh, no, no, Parmeshwar, Parmeshwar, uh, can I say something? Yeah, tell me, please. Uh, see, basically, even I have completed my AWS associate level. Okay. Okay, and uh, to make your preparation, definitely you have to go through your uh, Google and you have to search for that. Even you have to go to the YouTube videos and even you will get all such questions mm -hmm. and answer the interview questions and everything you will be getting from that side. There is no such thing called as a dumb available. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Raj, I think you would also agree with me. Like more we practice. the better it is like the more he would go ahead and create stuff if the like, yes. if i am or ec2 instance so it's more of permission hands on how much hands on you do it okay. and also just keep in mind that whatever instance you are creating don't keep it in a start mode or else you are jo uh, yeah. free I'm, I'm terminating you, actually <laughs> yes yeah. you have to take care of that whatever uh, <laughs> services you are using you have to make sure that those services are into free tier okay I have one, 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 one basic question. Actually, okay, okay, okay. Raj and to everyone, uh, when we stop, but still, uh, they are charging to us, right? Uh, uh, any reason? Uh, I mean, uh, like when we start and stop, both the cases, the bill amount is same. Mm, actually, one of my colleague uh, actually uh, recently faced this issue. Um, stop means actually the instance are not running, um, but still they are charging to us. actually it's like see basically there are two uh, there are difference between terminate and stop terminated in the stop. sense you are just terminating your session terminating in the sense that is it to instance is not more available for you because uh, yeah, if suppose really you have completely. terminated that session somebody else will use that is it to instance again you have to create that and, and stop is something like you have kept for yourself understood okay okay mm -hmm. so for that purpose your colleague might have done in a stop mode thus because of that he might be getting charged for that no. in fact it happened so, with me once i had associated ebs volume okay so mm -hmm. yeah i terminated my uh, nee, i was i had stopped my instance but uh, ebs volume was also attached so i was charged for that Too. Yes. You have to take care of those things as well. Because while you are terminating, somebody else will use that instance, and if you are stopping that, definitely it is under your control. So nobody mm. else will be able to use that. So for that purpose, you will be getting charged for that, whatever yeah. services you are you are using. Mm. Correct. Okay. And uh, one more question. Actually, uh, MFA. Uh, actually, I uh, associated to my like. Uh, 
while login i actually at a, a associated mfa but unfortunately mm -hmm. my mobile got formatted so i am unable to log into my account uh, any suggestion so uh, for so mfa i, I the, think again we have when to... i install the new mfa right install this mfa app but it mm -hmm. is not pairing uh, so i am unable to log into my existing aws account so um, i am unable to i don't know i i need some solution for this okay so for in that case what i'll do is even i'm not aware about this so give me just a day or two day time i'll get back to you on this because even yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm using this mfa every time i have to log into my instance so, I have for to... security purpose i did but unfortunately my mobile got hanged so i given to this uh, i mean yeah my people so they formatted but i i actually i really i forgot so after that i realized uh, mfa app also gone so i installed mm -hmm. but i'm unable to connect to my uh, aws account no worries i'll uh, give me just a day or two day time more slowly on monday i'll get back to you on this okay. yeah yeah, yeah. Per, yeah okay. permission if if you are available i don't know whether you are available on the test chat group or not or whether you are connected with yeah, yeah, me I'm, or not i'm available but, uh, but if if you can uh, so you can just ping me hi or linkedin or twitter or telegram anything so if i will also i will also look into that and if i will come across anything then i will definitely share with you thanks thanks guys. and uh, also i would request kindly add me to that particular group please or uh, give me the link so that i can uh, request you to join that group yeah sure i i will just type it down here okay okay thank you yeah thank you guys i really like today's session it was very very interactive yeah yeah same yeah thank you thank you yeah. Yeah, thank, and, uh, yeah. Knowledge. yeah so yeah. thank you jyoti for this wonderful insightful session i hope that now everyone would be able to understand how means how this vpc and internet gateway are working and how we can you know protect some of the our uh, ec2 what can we say resources with uh, with this is, with having them in private submit and not uh, you know exposing them to the internet world uh, so the, so thank you for that and thank you so much raj and parmeshwar for not only joining but also making the session more interactive and more insightful and uh, one really? more thing uh, can i just uh, ask you one more thing like uh, when do we get the link uh, like the invite zoom meeting invite for the next lecture yeah yeah so it's it's already mentioned in this telegram group as well apart from that uh, we try, we publish it on our linkedin and facebook as well uh, so 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 actually there is uh, so i will i will just do one clarification here the clarification so generally we meet at 11:30 am ist is saturday okay but uh, today uh, miss uh, due, today due to some reasons jyoti was not available at that time so that's why you know uh, we scheduled it earlier and so that we cannot use that planned uh, that Uh, you know planned uh, registration uh, so that's why we have to schedule it like this otherwise you have the so with that one link only you can register with all the sessions which are going to be a, which which would be upcoming in this uh, series okay no issues yeah yeah so, so i will stop have the next session uh, tomorrow i mean 